Seeking Wisdom Week 12, Heroes of God, Book of Judges. Overview. When we look at the historical background of the Book of Judges, we need to go back to 13 BCE. When the Israelites seized the land of Canaan and settled there, Egypt was already in a weakened state and claimed a portion of land on the coast of Syria. The Book of Judges is about those that have been guiding the people of God for 150 years between 1200 and 1050 BCE. This time period covers from the time Joshua died until the beginning of the King of Saul, who started the monarchy. However, this book was wrote after the exile around 400 years later to encourage those that were in exile. After we present the historical background, we must present the theology behind the history wants to present to us is sin leads to punishment and penance leads to forgiveness and liberation. The theological significance of this lesson is very important to those living in exile without a nation, land, or sacrifices. The author wants those living in exile to know that it is their own sin that leads to the loss of homeland, but if they repent, God will forgive and free them. The purpose behind the book of Judges is to present the work of God or show that God will intervene to defend his people. The author is also showing us that it is God's protectiveness that makes a disloyal people know they have sinned and come back to him. God has used his spirit to sustain the heroes that protected their families and liberated his people people. This is why his people were able to live peacefully and enjoy the benefits of having God in their lives, allowing us to always remember the great feats these solemn and admirable heroes have accomplished. So how did Israel survive without a supreme leader? Just read the book of Judges. Israel is still alive, although they are not as strong as they once were. Anytime there are borders, there are always great political and social issues. So how did Israel live next to fierce neighboring countries like Philistine in the west or Medan in the south? How did the Canaanites settling in the city attack and invade Israel? Why did the tribes of Israel fight against one another? These questions can be fully answered through the narrative of the Book of Judges. The political, situation, the political situation in the book of Judges. The Israelites and other nations had many things to deal with when it came to politics in their area. When Joshua died, the promised land, Canaan, was not completely occupied. So with no central authority, many tribes failed to maintain unity and indigenous people occupied many important bases. In fact, the Israelites only occupied the highlands and the plains belonged to the Canaanites and Philistines. Other areas of the country were occupied in the following ways. The tribe of Judah and Simeon, supported by Caleb, occupied the area of Hebron. The house of Joseph occupied the central region, north of Jerusalem. And no tribe occupied the area Joshua divided. The holy place of Siloam, in the land of Ephraim, held the Ark of the Covenant. Each area the Israelites occupied on the coastal area of Israel was ruled by a king. Israel's biggest threat was always the Philistines with their iron chariots and well-run army. And with the Canaanites still occupying some of the land the Israelites were living in, they were always moving inland, away from the sea and the islands of Kitab. So are you wondering who the judges are? The judges are the 12 national heroes of the Israelites that led God's people with God's guidance without a king because God was their king. The judges were divided into two types, six great judges and six small judges. The great judges are the honored heroes that liberated the nation for 
The great judges are the honored heroes that liberated the nation from foreign domination and were also known as charismatic judges and military leaders in New Testament terms. The small judges were legal leaders or civil servants. Because early Israel was a group of agriculture-oriented people, not yet urbanized, this was known as the transition period to the monarchy. The judges were the leadership for a temporary period when tribes had social or political difficulties. These judges never had inheritance rights and death concluded their missions. The book of Judges is said to be the most clearly structured book in the Bible with three parts. The introduction is from chapters 1 to 3. The judges are introduced in chronological order in chapters 3 to 16. And the end is discussed in chapter. This book is presented with one common premise that applies to all judges, big or small. And each judge belongs to a different era and tribe and must fight different enemies. The common theme of each chief's story follows the same configuration. The life and merits of each hero are exhausted to save the dark situation caused by the sins of the people and the punishment each judge suffers. Once the people repent, they will be able to return to a life with God. Let's look at it this way. The people sinned, God punished them, the people repented, and God once again freed them. Israel was always a people that could tell stories, but were never as talented as the narratives in the book of Judges, especially the story of Gideon or Samson. Gideon or Samson. Once again, we must look at how this book in the Bible relates to our everyday life. God's patience is often tested in the Bible, and the book of Judges is no different. Israel had a covenant with God, but they were not faithful to the covenant. The Israelites decided to leave God and run after evil gods the local people were chasing. They imitated the worship practices such as live sacrifices, and they often worshipped animals. But God never lost patience with them. He continued to love them with a trusting love. So when these people were punished for their sins, it was not because of hatred, but rather a faithful love that was a form of discipline calling them back to the right path. Today and every day the Lord is doing the same thing for us. He is patiently waiting for us to repent so we may reconcile with him to be forgiven. Have you ever wondered about the strange paths that God seems to follow? To carry out his plan of salvation, God has used both the weak and sinful, such as a weak woman, and the strong, like Samson. This should remind us of Paul's words. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world. Things that are not to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. But at the same time, every Christian needs to remember, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. And we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not, not come from us. When we look at Israel among the Gentiles in the image of the church today, what do you see? Compared to the people of Canaan and the Philistines, Israel was inferior in both population and size. And in today's world, it seems the church has become a minority community and at the same time attacked by several different enemies. However, the people of God must always remember to be the salt for light and the light of the world. We must always remember to look at ourselves and be sure the salt and light are always present, or everything the church has worked for will be thrown out and trampled. We must always remember to stay strong and not be humiliated like Samson when he had his hair cut, lost all his strength and was humiliated by his enemy. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and into the hand of the Philistines forty years. 
There was a certain man of Zora of the tribe of the Janets, whose name was Manoah. His wife was barren, having borne no children, and the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Although you were barren, having borne no children, you shall conceive and bear a son. Now be careful not to drink wine or strong drink or to eat anything unclean, for you shall conceive and bear a son. No razor is to come on his head, for the boy shall be a Nazarite to God from birth. It is he who shall begin to deliver Israel from the land of the Philistines. The woman bore a son and named him Samson. The boy grew and the Lord blessed him. The Spirit of the Lord began to stir in him. Once Samson went to Gaza, where he saw a prostitute and went into her. The Gazites were told, Samson has come here, come here. So they circled around and lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They kept quiet all night thinking, let us wait until the light of the morning, then we will kill him. But Samson lay only until midnight. Then at midnight he rose up, took hold of the doors of the city gate and the two posts, pulled them up, bar and all, put them on his shoulders, and carried them to the top of the hill that is in front of Hebron. After that, the Philistines went to Samson's girlfriend, Delilah, and offered, coax him and find out what makes his strength so great and how we may overpower him so that we may bind him in order to subdue him. And we will each give you 1,100 pieces of silver. Because of that money, Delilah accepted. At first, Samson refused to tell her where his strength came from, but she kept insisting so he could not bear it and had to reveal the secret. He said, A razor has never come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If my head were shaved, then my strength would leave me. I would become weak and be like anyone else. Revealing this was a big mistake, isn't it? Delilah immediately told the Philistines that I know the secret of Samson. Afterwards, she put Samson to sleep on her lap and called for someone to cut all his hair. She cried out, Samson, the Philistines come. When he woke up, he saw that his power was gone. The Philistines captured Samson, blinded him and imprisoned him. Now the lords of the Philistines gathered to offer a great sacrifice to their god Dagon, to their god Dagon, and to rejoice, for they said, Our God has given Samson our enemy into our hand. When the people saw him, they praised their God, for they said, Our God has given our enemy into our hand, the ravager of our country, who has killed many of us. They made him stand between the pillars. And Samson said to the attendant who held him by the hand, Let me feel the pillars on which the house rests so that I may lean against them. Now the house was full of men and women. All the lords of the Philistines were there, and on the roof there were about 3,000 men and women who looked on while Samson performed. Then Samson called to the Lord and said, Lord, God, remember me and strengthen me only this once. O oh God, so that with this one act of revenge, I may pay back the Philistines for my two eyes. On which the house rested, and he leaned his weight against them, his right hand on the one and his left hand on the other. Then Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. He strained with all his might, and the house fell on the lords and all the people who were in it. So those he killed at his death, were more than those he had killed during his life. Then his brothers and all his family came down and took him and brought him up and buried him beside his father Manoah. He had judged Israel 20 years. In conclusion, remember, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this week's lesson. Please join us next Friday for our new video. The answers to this week's questions will be revealed in next week's video. Remember, every Friday at 7, questions will be revealed in next week's video.
Remember, every Friday at 7 p.m., the Seeking Wisdom Challenge will be posted on YouTube and Facebook. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, or subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and we wish you a wonderful weekend full of grace and joy.